Welcome back. Uh, this is Construct and Organization Theory course and now we are looking at the basic principle as a model and uh, why is it important? Why, why do we learn this basic principle as a model? Uh, because uh, the, we are following the Nobel Prize document and the, the first topic uh, that the document is discussing is the tension between insurance and incentive and uh, to understand the tension we need to understand the basic principle agent model and also uh, it's the basic model so it's, it, 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 it will serve as the basis of other models so we, we are going to develop other models using this basic principle agent model so without this uh, if you do not, do not understand this basic model uh, you will uh, struggle uh, uh, afterwards so it is really important uh, for you to understand this basic uh, principle as a model. Uh, unfortunately, uh, it's not easy to understand, so I'm gonna uh, analyze this model uh, repeatedly uh, with multiple examples uh, to make you understand uh, this model uh, thoroughly. By the way, uh, I used to go over uh, what I taught uh, in the previous lecture. Uh, I, I used to spend like uh, 10 or 15 minutes uh, to just go over uh, the previous materials, but I'm not going to do that because uh, in this semester you can just uh, replay the previous videos. So uh, if you do not understand something, if you are not sure about something, uh, uh, if you encounter some unfamiliar terms, then go back to the previous uh, lecture videos and uh, you're going to find uh, what you miss. Okay, uh, so uh, Let's just jump to the first example. Uh, in the first example, the agent's reservation payoff is assumed to be zero, and the agent's action space, the effort level, uh, is discrete, and the output space uh, is also discrete. So uh, zero effort or one unit of effort, two units of effort, and uh, the, uh, the revenue is either five or ten. Uh, five means uh, low revenue, 10 means high revenue, right? So and the the principle offers a wage schedule W. W is a function uh, which is a, a function of x. So depending on the level of revenue, realized revenue, the wage is determined uh, by the contract. And the uh, output revenue revenue is 10 with probability a over 2. So if a is high, if the effort level is effort level is high, then the uh, revenue will be high. Uh, sorry, the more, more precisely, the probability that the revenue is high will increase, right? And the uh, principal's payoff is simply the profit, x minus w, x is revenue, w is the wage, so uh, revenue minus wage, wage is the cost, so revenue minus cost is the profit. And the uh, agent's payoff is w, wage, minus a squared, a squared is the effort cost. So if you put more effort, then you will get exhausted, so your disutility will be higher. And if you solve this model, uh, uh, the, the basic principle agent model with this, these additional assumptions, then you're going to find this solution. So the optimal effort level will be 1. And W of 5, W of 5 is the wage when the revenue is 5, right? So the uh, the argument of the wage function is the revenue, right? I, it was x, right? X w of x. x. If x is 5, then the wage will be w of 5. So w of 5 is the wage level when the revenue is 5. And similarly, uh, w of 10 is the wage level when the revenue is 10. And w of 5 and w of 10 are uh, in this relationship. In, in this relationship, the, the first equality, uh, uh, the, the equation, uh, and W of 10 must be uh, a number uh, between 2 and 4. Any number uh, between 2 and 4 will be okay. So we'll find this solution and uh, you're gonna see how, we, uh, how exactly uh, we uh, find this solution. So before we begin, uh, just recall that the principal's problem looks like this. So the uh, principal's objective function 
is the expected profit and uh, there, there are a couple of uh, there are two uh, constraints uh, the first con constraint is called IR constraint and the second constraint is called IC constraint I'm going to explain what they are and uh, uh, let's just focus on uh, for first look at the principal's objective function so it's the expected profit so it's, it's not just profit it's an expected profit the reason is the x is random so there was random component in x the revenue is determined by two uh, factors one factor is the effort of the agent and the other was some luck right luck uh, some some random uh, factor so that means x is random that also means w which is a function of x is also random so the the principle when uh, uh, when making when writing down the contract the principal does not know exact value of x because it's random so uh, the principal has to uh, maximize or the, the, the principal has to consider the expected utility expected profit right so the principal is uh, maximizing the expected utility by choosing what choosing w so what is w W is wage, wait. So the W is wage, but it's not just one variable. It's not scalar variable, right? So W is a function. So the principle is choosing a function to maximize the profit. So I guess you have never seen this. Uh, to you know, you you have never seen uh, this kind of problem, uh, maximization problem, uh, where the choice variable is a function but uh, don't worry uh, it's really easy it's really simple the principle is choosing the function means the principle is choosing w of 10 and w of 5 right so function in in this example function is nothing but the collection of these two variables w of 5 and w of 10 so uh, so uh, what what uh, in, in in plain words, what that means is the principal is choosing the wage level when the revenue is low, and also the wage level when the revenue is high. So by choosing these two, uh, the principal is uh, in 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 mathematical term, the principal is choosing a function to maximize the pro uh, the expected profit. Okay, so. We are done with this objective function. Now we move on to the constraints. So there are two constraints. Uh, IR, IC, right? So IR stands for individual rationality. IC stands for incentive compatibility. So the first one, the meaning of it, the first one, the first constraint is an, an inequality constraint and it shows that what what is the left hand side of the inequality the left hand side of inequality is the expected utility of the agent when the agent accepts the offer so when the agent participates in in this contract the expected payoff of the agent is expected value of wage minus a squared the effort cost so the left hand side is the expected utility of the agent and the right hand side is u underbar which is the reservation utility so which that is the utility uh, that the agent gets when the agent rejects the offer so this inequality implies that the agent is better off or at least uh, not worse off uh, by choosing uh, to choosing uh, participating in this contract so this IR constraint ensures that the uh, agent uh, participate, right? So another name of this constraint is participation constraint. So the individual rationality constraint or participation constraint uh, is the first constraint. And the second one, what is the second one? Second one is IC, uh, which stands for incentive compatibility. So what that means 
is the agent choose the effort level which is optimal given W function. So given the wage schedule, the agent choose the optimal effort level. So what this incentive compatibility means is the agent will choose the effort level which maximize the uh, agent's utility. So the principle can uh, affect the agent's behavior by choosing W, but uh, the principle cannot dictate the effort. So the principle cannot choose the effort level directly. The, the effort level will be chosen by the by the agent, but the principle will choose the effort level indirectly by uh, manipulating this uh, wage schedule. So by choosing wage schedule, the principle uh, is choosing the effort level uh, uh, indirectly, uh, but uh, then, then the principle has to uh, take into account the agent response, right? So by choosing, when, when, when you choose the effort, sorry, the, when you choose the wage level, uh, the you have to uh, take into account the response of the agent. And that response is captured in this IC constraint. So the IC constraint is the, uh, the basically the, the agent's best response function, uh, the agent's optimal response to the principal's action or strategy, and that must be taken into account when the principal is choosing the optimal wage schedule. So uh, you're going to see this IR constraint and IC constraint over and over in this semester. So uh, uh, I recommend you to uh, memorize these names. You know, it's not really important. Uh, it's not really difficult to memorize, but the uh, I want to emphasize that you're going to see these uh, constraints again and again. And later, I'm going to uh, just use these terms uh, without explaining further. So uh, when, I, when, I, when I say IR constraint, that means participation constraint. Uh, a constraint looks like the first one. And when I say IC constraint, that means the constraint uh, like a second one the second constraint uh, in this slide right okay so uh let's move on so uh let's find the solution how do we uh characterize the equilibrium our strategy is this since the action and out output spaces are discrete so effort level is either zero or one or two so only three levels of effort uh, are possible uh, available so the uh, we cannot use calculus technique. We cannot differentiate uh, any function. You know, no no function is differentiable because the domain of maximization is discrete. So instead, uh, we ha we'll have to maximize the payoffs by checking them in each case. Let's suppose the effort level is zero, uh, and we calculate the payoffs of the agent and the principal. And let's suppose the effort level is one and we calculate the payoffs of the agent and uh, principal, etc., uh, etc. Et we we uh, calculate the payoffs one by one, and then we compare. Uh, that's how we maximize their payoffs. So in a way, uh, we, we, are, we are maximizing, pay maximizing these functions, the utility functions, by uh, drawing a graph point by point, and we find the maximize the point right so that's that's our strategy and uh, in particular what you're going to do is this uh, this is the our, uh, this is the steps uh, that we're going to take so the first step we're going to start from the very last stage and we're going to move backward so this is the backward induction that we uh, saw uh, in one of the previous lectures so in, in game theory view, uh, I talked about this backward induction, right? So uh, we're going to use it. So we are going to start from the very last stage, and then we move backward. And, and then we are going to impose 
the binding IR constraint. What is, what is IR constraint? IR constraint is, is the participation constraint. It's the constraint that uh, makes sure that the agent accepts the offer, uh, the, the agent participates in the contract. So, okay, so that's the IR constraint. And what I, what I just said is we are going to impose the binding IR constraint. So what, what is binding? So binding IR constraint means that IR constraint is the inequality constraint. But what I'm, what I'm saying is that inequality constraint must hold as equality. So if the inequality constraint is satisfied uh, as a strict inequality, that means it's not binding. So a, a binding, so it's not binding. So a non-binding constraint is not important. Binding constraint is important. So uh, binding IR constraint means uh, the IR constraint must be satisfied as uh, equality, and it, it's going to be important. Okay. So uh, I'm going to explain why the IR constraint must be binding. But uh, for now, uh, let's just move on. So, uh, and then we, we are going to calculate the principal's payoff at different effort levels uh, to find the optimal effort level. So we, we are going to find uh, what, what is the optimal level of effort of the agent. And then uh, we are going to determine the wage schedule, uh, which uh, make the agent uh, put that much effort. Okay. So that's our plan. Okay. I claim that the IR constraint must be binding. So IR constraint is the inequality constraint which makes sure the uh, agent participates in the contract. And I, I claim that it must be binding. Uh, to prove uh, my claim, uh, let's just suppose it's not binding. That is, suppose that this uh, IR constraint holds as strict inequality. Okay, so in the first line, so look at this uh, inequality. Uh, it's a strict inequality. So participating in the contract is strictly better than uh, not participating in the contract. So the expected utility of uh, participating in the contract is strictly greater than uh, you on the bar, the reservation payoff of the agent where uh, the W non is the maximizer. So it, it's the solution of the principal's payoff. Let's suppose is W non is the solution of the principal's uh, uh, problem. Okay, so what is W non? So what is non? Non stands for? Non stands for non-binding. So okay, it's not really important, but the this W non is supposed to be the maximizer of the principal's payoff. Okay. Next step. Now imagine W non two. This is new new wage schedule. This new wage schedule is defined like this. So from W non, I subtract delta, where this delta is a tiny positive number. So it's really tiny. So uh, let's suppose that this W non 2 also satisfies the IR constraint as strict inequality. Uh, you can say that uh, if you can find really small delta, and if you have taken a real analysis uh, or something similar, then uh, you know that there is really, really small delta which makes this W non 2 also satisfies the IR constraint. So W non 2 satisfies the IR constraint and it increases the profit. So with this W non 2, the profit, the expected profit, will be higher than the expected profit with W non. So W non 2 is better than W none. 
which is a contradiction because w none is supposed to be the maximizer. Sup w none is supposed to be the solution of the principal's maximization problem. So it's a contradiction. Thus, uh, the, the conclusion is the IR constraint must be binding. Because we started uh, this uh, proof by uh, denying this uh, claim. So we suppose that the IR constraint is not binding and we show that there is contradiction so the conclusion must be the IR constraint must be binding. So this is a short proof of uh, the claim uh, that the IR constraint must be binding. So it intuitively uh, we can understand this claim uh, like this. So if the IR constraint is not binding that means the principle is giving more than enough surplus to the agent which means the principle is not really maximizing the profit and in reality maybe many principles are not maximizing many employers not maximizing their profit uh, in very strict let stri stri strict sense uh, insta instead many employers in real life uh, may be quite generous so the employers uh, give uh, generous uh, 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 gi give some uh, additional surplus to the workers but uh, for now let's just stick to the model and in this model the principal has the entire bargaining power by that what I mean is the principal is making a take it, a take it or leave it offer or ultimatum offer that means the principal has the entire bargaining power so the principal can take the entire surplus of this relationship uh, the generated from this relationship so the principal will take the entire surplus giving more than uh, uh, enough surplus to the agent is not optimal from the principal's point of view so uh, that's why the IR constraint must be binding okay so uh, let's start from the very last stage so this is the uh, last stage of the game. So the agents pay off. Uh, the agents uh, is maximizing the uh, utility or pay off uh, by choosing the effort level. Uh, to, cho to 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 choose the effort level before before we choose uh, the uh, effort level, let's just spell out the agents pay off. So the agents pay off is expected wage minus a squared and the expected wage looks like this expected wage is 1 minus a over 2 times w of 5 plus a over 2 times w of 10 minus a squared so what does this mean so the with probability 1 minus a over 2 the revenue is 5 in that case the agent uh, gets W over 5 as the wage and with the probability A over 2 the revenue is 10 the realized revenue is 10 in that case the wage will be W of 10 uh, the effort level is not random so it's just A squared uh, no matter what so uh, in the in the table below, uh, I wrote down the uh, agents payoff and the binding IR constraint uh, at different level levels of effort. So when uh, effort level is zero, the agents payoff is W over five, right? So uh, in the formula, just put zero uh, at A, then uh, you get W over five. So the agent's payoff is the wage. There is no effort cost because effort is zero. And then the binding IR constraint looks like this. The binding IR constraint uh, implies that W of 5 must be zero. Uh, similarly, when A is 1, uh, the agent's payoff is half times W of 5 plus half times W of 10 minus 1 
and the binding IR constraint means that half times W5 plus half times W10 must be 1. And when A is 2, the agent's payoff is W10 minus 4, and the binding IR constraint implies that W10 must be 4. But, uh, okay, so we, we, ha we have this, and uh, you shouldn't think like these binding IR constraints are uh, satisfied at the same time. All, all, all three are satisfied at the same time. That, that's not what I mean. What I, what I mean by this is if the chosen effort level is zero, then in that case, if the chosen effort level is zero, in that case, W5 must be zero. And if the chosen effort level is 1, uh, the or chosen effort level or the induced effort level or, or the target effort level is 1, then the binding IR constraint uh, must look like uh, the, the, the IR constraint in the second uh, uh, row. Okay, so that's, that's what I mean. So uh, these three uh, equalities uh, on, on, the, on the right column uh, do not hold at the same time. So we just consider them one by one. Okay. Uh, let's move on. So uh, next, let's consider the principal's payoff. The principal's payoff is the expected profit. And expected profit uh, can be spelled out like this. So with probability 1 minus A over 2, the revenue is realized uh, as 5. So revenue is 5 and the wage is W5, so the profit will be 5 minus W5. And with probability A over 2, the revenue is realized as 10. Uh, in, in that case, uh, the profit is 10 minus W of 10. So this is the uh, principal's payoff. And again, we see a similar uh, table uh, I, I put uh, the binding IR constraint on the left column and on the right column I wrote the principal's payoff. So the principal's payoff is 5 minus W of 5 when A is 0 and the binding IR constraint implies that W of 5 is 0 that means the principal's payoff will be 5. Okay, And when A is 1 the binding IR constraint implies that half times W5 plus half times W10 equals 1 and the principal's payoff will be 6.5 and when A is 2 the principal's uh, payoff will be 6 so now we can compare these numbers right so the principal's payoff is either 5 or 6.5 or 6 as you can see the principal's payoff is highest when A is 1. So what does that mean? So the principal wants to uh, implement the agent's uh, uh, effort level as 1. So the principal's target effort level is 1. So the principal does not choose the effort level directly, but the principal can uh, influence the agent to choose uh, one, right? So the principal will manipulate this W of 5 and W of 10 to make the agent choose one, one unit of effort. That's the principal's plan because that's how the principal maximizes the payoff, right? So the principal p principal's payoff is maximized when the chosen effort level is 1. So, how exactly uh, do we do that? So, to induce uh, A equals 1, these must be satisfied first. A equals 1 must be preferred to A equals 0. That means uh, the following uh, inequality must hold so the first inequality uh, means that the, the left hand side of the first inequality is the expected utility of the agent 
uh, when the agent uh, chooses uh, one unit, uh, put, uh, puts uh, one unit of effort, and the right hand side is the uh, agent utility when the agent choose uh, agent chooses zero. So uh, the agent will choose one. Uh, the agent will prefer to choose one uh, to choosing uh, zero if the first inequality is satisfied and the second inequality is similar so uh, the agent uh, will choose 1 over uh, 2 if the following inequality is satisfied so the left hand side of the inequality is the expected utility of the agent when the agent chooses uh, one unit of uh, effort and the uh, right hand side is the agent's utility when the agent uh, puts two, two units of effort. So if these two uh, inequalities are satisfied, then the agent will uh, put just one unit of effort. And also, uh, we will have, we'll have to consider this binding IR constraint. So binding IR constraint uh, imposes a relationship between W of 5 and W of 10. Right? So we have these uh, three, uh, uh, two we, we have these two inequalities and one equation. Uh, these uh, imposes uh, some restrictions on the uh, wage schedule, and any wage wage schedule which satisfies uh, these uh, constraints then uh, will uh, do the job. Yeah, it will maximize uh, the profit. It will induce the effort level 1 and uh, it will maximize the profit okay so that will be the solution so effort level the equilibrium effort level is 1 and the uh, the this uh, W5 and W10 uh, must satisfy this uh, relation uh, so the uh, the first sorry the, the second equation is the binding IR constraint and the uh, inequalities are from the uh, inequalities that we just saw in the previous slide. Okay, so uh, this is the solution, this is the equilibrium uh, of the first example. So, uh, just a few things to mention. Uh, first, uh, the effort level, the op optimal effort level is 1. It's not two, so what that means is that the principal uh, may not want to uh, uh, implement the highest effort level. Why is that? The eventually, the principal has to compensate the effort cost. If the principal does not compensate the effort cost, the agent will not accept the offer in the first place. So to to make the agent to accept the offer the principal has to compensate the effort cost so the cost will be uh, uh, bared I I so that the principal will, be will, will bear the cost uh, eventually so uh, the principal may not want to implement the principal may not want to induce the highest effort the highest effort was two two units of effort but the optimal effort in this example uh, was one so then, what determines this effort level, optimal effort level? So let's just think about this question. What if we replace the high revenue 10 by 6? So uh, in, in, in example 1, the high revenue was 10. So low revenue was 5, the high revenue was 10. Let's just fix the low revenue uh, at 5, and uh, let's just replace uh, 10 uh, by 6. So instead of 10, uh, let's consider 6. So the high revenue is 6. Then uh, what do you expect to happen? Uh, in this case, I'm not going to show it, uh, but uh, you, can, you, can, you can prove it uh, by yourself. Uh, in this case, the optimal effort level is 0. So the benefit of working hard, the benefit of putting more effort, the benefit of inducing higher effort is not very high in this case. So if the high revenue is just 6, 
so the difference in revenue is just one right so the low revenue is five high revenue is six then uh, you don't want to bother to induce high effort so you just uh, let the work uh, let the worker uh, do not put any effort and the rep the, the, the and then the the effort the, the agent will not put any effort and that will be optimal and let's think about the second question. In the second question, we replace the high revenue 10 by 20. Instead of 10, uh, let's uh, assume that the high revenue is 20. Uh, again, a similar ex exercise. Uh, you you can do the similar exercise that I I just uh, what I what I just uh, showed uh, what I have just shown, and you can prove that the in this case the optimal effort is two units of effort okay so the optimal level is two so depending on the size of revenue the optimal effort uh, will be different uh, similarly uh, depending on the effort cost uh, the optimal effort will be different okay so uh, this is the uh, this is what I wanted to uh, discuss uh, for today and we have homeworks so the first homework so uh, it's I, I, I want you to uh, consider this full information benchmark what we just considered is a hidden action situation so the action was hidden uh, how, how, how do we uh, recognize that so in the problem that we just considered W was a function of X so why do we uh, consider that wage function? Because we couldn't write a contract uh, which is a function of effort. So instead of uh, output or revenue X, uh, you consider a, a wage schedule which is contingent on A, effort level. So set up a problem set up a problem uh, which is similar to what we just saw uh, and we, you allow a contract uh, which is contingent on A so W is a function of A and uh, solve uh, the problem so that's the first homework this is the second homework is this so uh, it's about reservation payoff so in, in the first example uh, we assume that this u on the bar is positive but you may wonder what if this u on the bar is uh, sorry in the first example uh, we assume the u on the bar is zero uh, the reservation payoff is zero but uh, you may wonder uh, what happens if this u on the bar is positive so uh, I want you to think about that so that's the second homework again uh, these homeworks will not be graded uh, I, I'm, I'm going to uh, make a board uh, to which you can submit your work uh, I'm gonna just check the whether you uh, submit your homework or not uh, to just check the attendance but uh, again I, I want to uh, also uh, mention that if you just write down uh, anything like you know some lyrics of a song or, or or if you just submit a blank paper uh, if you just write uh, a love letter to your uh, boyfriend or girlfriend uh, and submit it to the uh, to the board the, the the assignment board then that will not count okay so I'm giving you a an, an opportunity to think about these problems and if you do not so I'm not gonna grade it but if you do not do that I'm not gonna uh, count it as a proper uh, uh, fulfillment of the assignment okay so do this assignment do think about these problems and submit your homeworks uh, on the board uh, if you uh, submit a blank paper I'm not gonna count it alright Okay, uh, bye.